Yes, I do. My name is Alan Wattenberg, that's A-L-L-E-N, last name Wattenberg, W-A-T-T-E-N-B-E-R-G. You may inquire. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Mr. Wattenberg, you are the co-owner of a business located here in the city of Los Angeles, are you not? That's correct. And what is the name of your business, sir? The name of our business is Ross Cutlery. And what type of business is Ross Cutlery? Uh, Ross Cutlery is a retail uh, cutlery store and uh, sharpening service. And Mr. Wattberg, would you tell us where your business is located, please? Our business is located at 3rd and Broadway at 310 South Broadway in the uh, old Bradbury building. And sir, how long has your business been located in the old Bradbury building? Uh, my brother and I have had the business since 1965 and prior to that another gentleman owned the business for about 40 years, and his name was uh, Mr. Ross. And during that period of time, has Ross Cutlery been located at one location or another within the old Bradbury building? Uh, it's been located in three different uh, locations within the building. Now, Mr. Wattenberg, you are co-owner of Ross Cutlery, is that correct? That is correct. And with whom do you co-own Ross Cutlery? I co-own Ross Cutlery with my brother, Richard Wattenberg, and, sir, at this time, how many employees do you have? We have, uh, counting my brother and myself, there's uh, seven of us. And, sir, as of this time, is one of the employees who works for you named Jose Camacho? Yes, there is. And about how long has Mr. Camacho worked for you, Mr. Wattenberg? Mr. Camacho has worked for me approximately 20 years. And what is his job title? Uh, he's uh, in sales. Mr. Wattenberg, I would like to direct your attention to the date of Tuesday, May the 3rd, 1994. Were you working at your business on that day? Uh, yes, I was. And was Mr. Camacho, the employee who, to whom you have just referred, was he working that day as well? Yes, he was. Mr. Wattenberg, do you recall approximately what time you arrived at Ross Cutlery that day? That day I more than likely came in somewhere between 7 and 7.30. And, sir, are you the one who opens the business? Generally, I am, yes. And Mr. Wattenberg, on that date of May the 3rd, 1994, were you working during the afternoon hours? Yes, I was. And was Mr. Camacho working that afternoon as well? Yes, sir, he was. On that particular afternoon, Mr. Wattenberg, uh, did you observe any unusual activity occurring outside of your business that afternoon? Yes, sir, I did. And would you please tell us what you observed? Uh, this particular day, there was a film company there doing a pilot for a uh, TV series, I believe. And what types of things did you see that evidenced such filming or uh, such a project underway? There was a uh, rather uh, large film crew there with uh, cameras, lights, and all the different items that go along with filming. And specifically in relation to your storefront, where was this filming occurring? Directly in front of our store. And did you, during the course of that afternoon, happen to observe some of the filming as it was occurring? Yes, I did. And during the course of your observations of that filming, did you recognize anyone on the set? Uh, yes, sir, I did. And who was that that you observed, sir? Uh, Mr. O.J. Simpson. You see Mr. O.J. Simpson present in court today? Yes, sir, I do. Would you point him out for us, please? The gentleman over there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, counsel. Mr. Wattenberg, during the course of that afternoon, did the defendant ever come into your store, Ross Cutlery? Uh, yes, he did. And how many times do you recall him coming into your store that afternoon? Mm, I believe I saw him there uh, once, possibly twice myself. Okay. Now, with regard to the first time, to your best recollection, uh, did you pay close attention to the defendant as he came into the store? Not really. We just let him browse around. We didn't bother him, or I should say I didn't bother him. Was your attention drawn to other activities at the time? Uh, at the other time, I was busy doing uh, several different things in the store that I normally do. I see. Now, were you present in the store that afternoon when Mr. Simpson, the defendant, came in a second time? Uh, yes, I was. Okay. And uh, would you tell us what occurred when you observed the defendant come in the store the second time? Uh, I believe that he uh, came in 
and uh, looking into our store from the outside, he was looking at items on the left-hand side of our store, which would be the north side of our store. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Jose Camacho showed him several different items that he had an interest in, and uh, he spent some time with him, talking with him and stuff. And Mr. Wattenberg, where were you when you observed the defendant to come into the store the second time? To my best of knowledge, I was at the front portion of the store on the other side. Would this be on the south side of the building, or your store, rather? On the south side of the building, yes, sir. At any point in time during the second time that the defendant came into your store, did he ever come over to your location on the south side of the store? Yes, sir, he did. And tell us what happened when the defendant came over either to or near your position, sir. I believe, if memory serves me right, uh, I spoke with him briefly, and uh, he pointed out a couple of items on the back shelf of... Uh, the display where I was standing, and uh, I showed him uh, an item. And Mr. Wattenberg, when you refer to items, what do you mean, sir? Uh, he had an interest in some knives that we sell. What type of knives did the defendant <coughs> express an interest in? The item that I recall was a large uh, lock blade knife. And could you describe that particular type of knife a little further for us, sir? Sure. This particular knife uh, is about 15 inches in length when it's opened. It has a locking device on it that holds the blade in a fixed position. Uh, when you release the lock and fold the blade closed, I believe it's about maybe eight, eight and a half inches in length. It has a stag handle on it with a shiny stainless steel blade. Uh, the blade has some engraving on it, and basically uh, the ends, the hilt is uh, brass, and there's a little guard toward the front portion of it that's also brass. And Mr. Wattenberg, when you refer to a stag handle, would you explain what you mean, sir? A uh, stag handle is the uh, antlers off of a deer, and they utilize this quite a bit on some of the nicer, what they call collectible knives, because it makes an attractive handle. Now, at the time the defendant was expressing interest in this particular knife, were you standing behind a counter of some sort? Uh, yes, sir. I was standing behind the display counter. Is that a glass-topped display counter? Uh, yes, it is. And where was this particular knife in which the defendant had expressed interest? Uh, directly behind me. Was it on a wall? It's on a wall, yes, sir. Did you remove that knife from the wall in order to show it to the defendant? Yes, sir, I did. And would you please describe what happened, sir? Uh, about the time when I uh, took the knife off the wall to uh, show it uh, to the defendant, uh, Mr. Camacho, which had been waiting on him previously, uh, entered the picture, and I had some things that I needed to do in the back, so Mr. Camacho continued the sale. Now, with regard to the manner in which this particular knife was displayed, was it displayed with the blade open or closed within the handle? And to my best knowledge, it was open. And when you displayed the knife, that is, took it from the wall and displayed it for the defendant, was the blade open or within the handle? As far as I can recall, it was, yes, sir. Now, Mr. Wattenberg, at the time, uh, and as of this particular date, did you have more than one size of this particular type of knife uh, within your store? At uh, the particular time, I think we had two knives uh, similar to this on display, one short one and one long one. And, and how much shorter was the shorter one than the longer one you've described? Uh, possibly a couple of inches. I don't know the exact dimension of it. Was there a price difference between the two? There's a slight price difference, yes. Uh, maybe 10 or $15 difference in price. Do you recall the price of the larger knife which you showed to the defendant? I believe the larger knife was uh, $74.98. Now, do you recall showing the smaller version of this larger knife to the defendant that afternoon? I really don't recall whether I did or not. Is it possible that you did? It is possible that I did. I was very busy that day and might not remember it. And you recall, sir, however, showing the larger knife to the defendant. Is that correct? That is correct. Are you certain of that? Yes, I am. How certain of you are you uh, of that? Very sure. Now, did you continue to have a, or did you have any sort of conversation with the defendant as you were showing him this knife? I really can't recall whether I did or not. Uh, did the defendant express an interest in purchasing this particular knife? 
Uh, at the present time, when I was there uh, showing it to him, he just wanted to see the knife, which I, uh, you know, took off the uh, back display, and uh, I don't know if I handed it to him or put it on the counter, but I did, you know, uh, show it to him. At some point in time, Mr. Wattenberg, did Mr. Camacho come over to assist you uh, with the defendant? Yes, he did. Okay. Tell us what happened then, sir. Uh, after then, I believe that I excused myself. I had some things that I needed to do in the back, some paperwork, and uh, I left and uh, returned to the back of the store where we have like a little office area. Uh, shortly thereafter, did you see Mr. Camacho again? Yes, a little bit after that, uh, Mr. Camacho uh, came to the back where I was and uh, he uh, handed me the knife and uh, told me that the customer wished to have it uh, sharpened. I uh, took it in the back where we do our sharpening and I sharpened the knife and then I returned to the front with it and I put it on the counter. Now, sir, when you're referring to the customer, are you referring to the defendant? Yes, sir, I am. And with regard to the knife that was brought back to you, was this the same knife that you had brought off the display and presented to the defendant or showed to the defendant? Yes, sir, it was. This was the larger 15-inch overall uh, dimensioned knife, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Now, Mr. Wattenberg, is there a difference between a single-edged knife and a double-edged knife? Yes, sir, there is. Would you explain the difference for us, please? Sure, a single-edged knife uh, is sharpened on one side only, and a, a double-edged knife is sharpened on both sides. And what type of knife was this knife that you sharpened for the defendant that afternoon? This knife was a single-edged knife sharp on one side only. With regard to the other side of a single-edged knife, is the edged, as with regard to this particular knife, blunt, dull, sharpened? How would you characterize it? Uh, on this particular knife, the uh, uh, reverse side is completely flat or blunt. Now, with regard to the knife that you sharpened for Mr. Camacho, uh, you were certain that this was the larger of the stiletto-type knives that you've described. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Now, what did you do, Mr. Wattenberg, after, after you sharpened the knife for Mr. Uh, Camacho? Uh, after I sharpened the knife uh, for Mr. Camacho, I uh, put it on the counter and uh, continued to, you know, doing what I was doing in the back. I believe I was doing some paperwork or possibly doing some ordering. I don't remember exactly, uh, you know, it's length of time ago, so I couldn't tell you exactly what I was doing, but some type of office work. Did you ever see the defendant leave your store that afternoon? Uh, no, I don't believe that I did. I was in the back working, and I don't believe that I saw him leave the store. You had some awareness developed at some point that he had, in fact, left the store. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Wattenberg, I would now like to direct your attention to Tuesday, June the 14th, 1994. Uh, were you working at Ross Cutlery on that particular day? Uh, I believe that I was. I'm not... Uh familiarized with that particular day. It was on a Tuesday, you said? That's correct. On a Tuesday, I definitely would have been there. And do you recall a date when some detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department arrived at your store? Yes, sir, I do. And you were present when they arrived? Yes, I was. Uh, were any other employees present besides yourself? Uh, there were several other employees there. Uh, amongst them were your brother, Richard? Yes, my brother Richard was there. I suppose it would be unfair to characterize your brother Richard as an employee. He is, in fact, a co-owner. Co-owner, co correct. But uh, amongst the employees present was Mr. Camacho there. Yes, sir, he was. And did you speak with the detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department? Yes, sir, I did speak with them. Did your brother Richard speak with the detectives? Yes, sir, he did. And did Mr. Camacho speak with the detectives? Yes, sir. During the course of your conversation with the detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department, uh, did you show them a knife? Yes, sir, we did. Uh, were you asked by those detectives uh, to show them a particular type of knife? Uh, yes, sir, we were. And tell us what you did, sir. Uh, I took them to the uh, front area of my store where these particular knives were sold and uh, proceeded to show them the uh, knife. And by the knife, what knife are you referring to, Mr. White? Uh, they had an interest in the knife that we had previously sold uh, to Mr. O.J. Simpson. And did you show them an identical knife? Uh, yes, sir, I did. And 
Uh, was that knife identical as far as you can determine to the knife that was sold to the defendant? It was identical uh, in uh, size and type. Some of these knives will vary a little bit because the stag is a natural material, so it could be a little darker, a little lighter, but uh, the overall size and function of the knife is the same. Was the knife that you showed to the Los Angeles Police Department detectives uh, identical in terms of price? Uh, yes, sir, it was. Was it also uh, priced at seventy-four ninety-eight? Yes, sir, that's correct. Was that knife sold to the detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department? Yes, sir, it was. Your Honor, at this time I would like to mark an exhibit for identification. Would the court prefer that I mark it next in order as three, or may I mark it as People's One for purposes of the prelim per se? All right, we'll call it People's One for purposes of the preliminary hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. And may I approach the witness? Yes. Your Honor, I have here a board upon which is contained four photographs depicting various aspects of a knife, which I would characterize as being uh, a knife uh, as described by Mr. Wattenberg in his testimony this afternoon. Each of the four photographs is designated by a letter A, B, C, and D. May this exhibit uh, be marked as People's One for Identification? Yes. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Mr. Wattenberg, I'm going to direct your attention to the exhibit which has now been marked as People's One for identification. Do you see that exhibit, sir? Yes, sir, I do. And specifically, do you see the photograph which has been designated as photograph A? Yes, sir. And would you describe for us, sir, what is depicted in photograph A? In photograph A, there's a uh, picture of the knife in its open position. Uh, this is a knife that we currently sell in our store. And when you refer to the knife, again, is this, do these photos depict in a true and accurate fashion the knife that was sold by your store to the detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department on or about June the 4th, uh, excuse me, yes, June the 14th? Yes, sir, this one appears to be an exact, uh, the exact knife. So with regard to photograph A, sir, does that photograph uh, depict some of the characteristics of the knife purchased by the defendant uh, on May the 3rd, and that you have described in your testimony. Yes, sir, that's correct. Sir, I'd like to direct your attention to the photograph designated as photograph B. Do you see that photograph, sir? Yes, sir. With regard to that photograph, does that photograph de depict the overall dimensions of the knife that was sold to the detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department and which was identical to the one sold to the defendant? Uh, would it be possible for me to take a closer look at it? With the court's permission. Of course, you can step down and take a look. Yes, sir, that appears to be the, uh, the knife. It's equal length to the one that uh, Mr. Simpson purchased and also the uh, detectives from the police department purchased. And in terms of dimensions, Mr. Wattenberg, what is the overall length for that knife? The overall length is approximately 15 inches. And, sir, when we refer to overall knife, we are referring to the knife in a locked open position, are we That's, not? That is correct. Directing your attention, sir, to photograph C, the photograph designated with the C. Do you see that, sir? Yes, sir, I do. And, Mr. Wattenberg, what does that photograph depict? That photograph there is uh, showing the length of the blade. And what is the length of the blade as depicted in that photograph? The length of the blade in the photo is approximately six inches. Mr. Wattenberg, earlier in your testimony this afternoon, you described some inscription on the blade that was sold to the defendant. Is that correct? That is correct. And do you see either similar or identical inscription upon the blade depicted in photograph C? The uh, engraving on the blade is identical. And what does the engraving, uh, what is the engraving? What is engraved on that blade? On the uh, blade, it's engraved. It's engraved stiletto, and then it says Germany underneath it. Now, Mr. Wattenberg, I'd like to direct your attention to the photograph designated with the D. Do you see that, sir? Yes, sir, I do. And what does that photograph depict? 
That photograph shows the knife in a closed position. And can you give us the approximate dimensions of the knife in a closed position? In a closed position, it's approximately, I believe, eight inches. Oh, Mr. Wattenberg, in your testimony today, you've described the knife that was sold to the defendant as a locking blade knife. Is that correct? That is correct. Would you tell us what that means, sir? Okay, a locking blade knife is a knife that has a mechanism in it that when the blade is swung to an open position, it locks it into that open position so it won't easily close when it's being used. And by what processor does one close such a knife if one wanted to? On this particular knife, there's a uh, lever at the rear portion of the knife that you push down and then fold the blade closed. And except for depressing that lever, would the knife remain locked in an open blade position if positioned that way? In most general use, it would, yes, sir. Now, Mr. Wattenberg, uh, you are aware, are you not, that your employee, Mr. Jose Camacho, testified before uh, the Los Angeles County Grand Jury last week, are you not? Uh, yes, sir, I am. And after Mr. Camacho testified, did you become aware that he had been approached by various individuals from the media uh, who were trying to get Mr. Camacho to talk to the media? Okay, let me clarify uh, this because uh, I was on uh, a, a vacation and I was gone the week that this all transpired. I learned of this after returning from vacation, so I have to testify in that regards that I wasn't there when uh, the news media deluged our store, but I learned of it afterward. And is it your understanding, sir, that the news media deluged your store only after Mr. Camacho testified before the grand jury? To my knowledge, that's correct, yes. And Mr. Wattenberg, after you returned from your trip, uh, did you become aware that Mr. Camacho, as well as your brother, had signed some sort of agreement with someone? Yes, sir, I did. And what was your awareness? Uh, they had signed an agreement with the Inquirer magazine, National Inquirer. And when was it that you became aware of this agreement? Uh, I was uh, made aware of this when I returned on Saturday. Uh, let's see, I don't know the date on Saturday. Uh, was last Saturday. Approximately maybe 8 o'clock when I got home, I called my brother, and uh, my brother told me what had transpired during the week when I was gone. Mr. Wattenberg, did you sign an agreement with the National Enquirer? Uh, no, sir, I did not. However, sir, do you expect to profit in some manner from your brother and your employee, Mr. Camacho, having signed such an agreement? Uh, yes, sir, I do. And would you explain to us, please, how you expect to profit? Uh, my brother and I, being equal partners in the business, are going to divide this money up three ways. Mr. Camacho will receive one-third, my brother one-third, and myself one-third. And what sum of money are we talking about, Mr. Wattenberg? The figure, I believe, is $12,500. Have you been contacted personally by anyone from the National Enquirer? Yes, sir, I have. And would you describe the circumstances of that, please? A uh, gentleman named Mr. Alan Smith, which is the senior uh, reporter for the West Coast, uh, called me, I believe, on uh, Saturday. Can I clarify one thing? Because I just realized that I made a mistake. Be my I, day, sir. I returned on Friday evening, not on Saturday, from my trip from Germany. On Saturday morning, I got a call from Mr. Alan Smith that he wanted to purchase one of these knives to send it in to the Enquirer so they could use it for photo purposes. And I don't remember the exact time. Uh, Mr. Smith came in the store. We talked briefly. He purchased the knife. Uh, I called uh, Federal Express, I believe, and they sent a courier to pick up the knife about an hour later, which uh, we had ready for them. 
Well, Mr. Wattenberg, uh, to your knowledge, has your brother or Mr. Camacho received any money from the National Enquirer as of today's date? No, sir, we have not. Do you have some expectation of when you might receive some money from the National Enquirer? Uh, my brother was instructed uh, by the National Enquirer that after the story has run for a week, that we would be, uh, you know, given the uh, payment. And, sir, when do you expect the story to run? The story is due to be released uh, Monday. Now, have you described the extent of your contact, your personal contact with the National Enquirer? Uh, yes, sir, I have. And, sir, to date, you have not received any money from the National Enquirer? Is that no, correct? I have not, sir. Mr. Wattenberg, if I may, with regard to the figure of $12,500 that you've indicated in your testimony this afternoon, is that figure or that sum to be divided equally amongst the three of you, that is yourself, your brother, and Mr. Camacho? That is correct, sir. And it is not the fact that you are to receive approximately $12,500, your brother receives $12,500, and Mr. Camacho receives $12,500. No, it's a total of 12,500 complete, all three of us together. Thank you, Mr. Wattenberg. No further questions. Thank you. Mr. Shapiro? Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Wattenberg. Good afternoon, sir. You describe this knife as a collectible. Yes, sir. What is a collectible? A collectible is generally a finely crafted knife that uh, collectors would be uh, interested in. Are there different categories of knives that you carry in your store? Yes, sir, there are. What are those categories? Uh, we carry uh, cook's knives, uh, butcher knives, uh, general purpose kitchen knives, pocket knives of every size and description that you could think of, uh, hunting knives. You know, the list could go on and on. There's uh, many, many different categories of knives. How would you differentiate a hunting knife from a collectible knife? A uh, hunting knife could also be a collectible knife. It would depend on who made it and the quality involved. What is the main purpose of a hunting knife? The main purpose of a hunting knife is fishing and hunting. And to use for what purpose? Uh, generally for uh, a cutting tool. And are those usually uh, single-edged or double-edged? Most hunting knives are with a single edge. And did Mr. Simpson at any time ask to see a hunting knife? I believe that he did, yes, sir. And you showed him numerous knives, did you not? Uh, myself, personally, I did not. Mr. Camacho, to your knowledge, did? Uh, yes, sir, he did. Do you uh, maintain books and records in the course of your business? Uh, yes, sir, we do. And do you maintain an inventory of your business? Uh, we carry uh, not a complete inventory. We do an inventory like annually, you know, for the, uh, for the city requirement or whatever. And do you keep a record of sales in the normal course of your business? We uh, generally ring up items on a cash register, and at the end of the day, we take a total we keep a total of uh, repairs because repairs are non-taxable. Uh, at the end of the day, we fill out a uh, daily cash sheet which indicates the total of sales and the total of repairs. Does your receipt have the individual, does your cash register record the individual prices for items that are sold during a given day? Generally not, sir. Do you, have you checked your receipts for this particular day? Uh, yes, I have. And did they keep a list of the individual purchases? Uh, no, this uh, sale was just a cash sale, which was rung up on the cash register. When a sale is made in the normal course of your business, is a receipt given? Uh, there are times when a receipt is given if a customer requires it, or if it's something that's being, like, mailed, that we need a record of, you know, for mailing purposes, or if an item is put on layaway, there are receipts made out. But if a sale is made, just a cash sale, it is rung up on the cash register. Are duplicate receipts made? Uh, no, sir, they're not. Just one copy of one receipt? 
Yes, sir. And that goes to the customer. That's correct, sir. So what you are telling us is you have no records whatsoever to establish that this particular item for this particular price was sold on this particular day. That would be correct, sir. Regarding uh, the exhibit that you've been shown and that was purchased by the Los Angeles Police Department uh, about a week ago. Yes, sir. Except for the handle, you would say the knife is the identical knife? Uh, yes, sir, that's correct. And the handle will vary in design and color? Uh, there could be slight differences in the color and uh, texture of the bone. Thank you. Nothing further. Mr. Hodgman, anything further? And, Your Honor, I have no redirect. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wattenberg. Thank Until you. you're uh, officially excused from giving testimony in connection with this matter, I'm going to order you please not to discuss your testimony with anyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have another witness available at this time? I, I do, Your Honor. Mr. Jose Camacho. Thank you. Mr. Camacho, I understand, is sequestered in the hallway. All right. I guess that's not really sequestration. Please, sir. Please follow. Swear testimony about the given of the cost 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 of the Mr. Camacho, you work at uh, the cutlery store known as Ross Cutlery located at 310 South Broadway in the city of Los Angeles, do you not? Yes, sir. And, sir, how long have you been working there? I've been there for uh, 22 years. And what is your job there, Mr. Camacho? I'm a salesman. Mr. Camacho, I'd like to direct your attention to the individual I'm standing behind. Do you recognize this man, sir? Yes, sir. And who is this man? So, Mr. O.J. Simpson. Indicating the defendant, Your Honor? Yes. And, Mr. Camacho, uh, have you ever seen the defendant in the cutlery store where you work? Yes, sir. I did. And do you recall about when that was, Mr. Camacho? Oh, this is about nine or or 10 weeks ago, something like that. Do you recall the exact date? Uh, be like uh, close to May, on May. I can recall exactly the date. Your, your best estimate is nine to 10 weeks ago, is yes, that sir. correct? Now, Mr. Camacho, on the date that you saw the defendant, in the store where you work. Was there anything unusual or extraordinary going on outside the store? Uh, they were filming a movie there at the front of the store. And at any point in time during the course of that filming, did you go out and take a look and see what was going on? Yeah, we got to the lobby and then we were watching uh, all the actors there. And uh, at some point in time during the afternoon hours of the date of this filming, did you see the defendant come into the cutlery store? Yes, he walked in up to the store. Okay. And tell us what happened after the defendant entered the store. Well, when I saw him walking into the store, I just, uh, you know, I looked at him and then I knew who, who he was. And then he asked to see some knives. So I showed him where the knives were. Now, sir, at the time the defendant asked you to see some knives, uh, do you recall where you were within the store? Meaning, were you near the north display counter or the south dis display counter in the store? Well, when he, got, when he walked into the store, I was at front. And then I walked through the, through the back of the store where those uh, knives were. And he asked me some prices for the knives. So I just gave him some prices. 
So did you show the defendant, or excuse me, I'll withdraw that. Did the defendant express some interest in various knives? Uh, he liked one special knife. It's a, a small knife. It's made by case. And I showed it to him. Uh, tell us a little bit about the knife, the best you can recall. Uh, it's a collectible item. It's a knife that is not made anymore. And it's a nice looking knife. And he, uh, when I showed it to him, he said that he wanted to buy it. But at that time, he didn't have no money to purchase it. So he told me that he was going to come back and buy it. And then uh, at that time, he got called, you know, to go and film again. So he left. And Mr. Camacho, sometime later that afternoon, did you see the defendant in the store again? Yes, he came back about 45 minutes or what an hour later. And what happened when the defendant came back later that afternoon? Well, when, he, when I saw him uh, walking him back to the store, so I, I knew what he wanted. So I walked through the back of the store, tried to show him the knife again. But then somehow he, uh, I guess he liked some other knife at, at the entrance. So what happened, Mr. Camacho? So uh, I followed him where he was going through the front of the store. And then I showed him, or I, I didn't say I showed him. My boss was at front already. And by your boss, to whom he, are you referring, Mr. Camacho? Uh, Mr. Alan Wattenberg. The witness that just testified before you? Yes, sir. And what happened there at the front of the store in the vicinity of uh, Mr. Wattenberg? When I got there, he was already showing a uh, certain knife that he, uh, that he purchased. What type of knife was Mr. Wattenberg showing to the defendant? Uh, he showed in uh, one of the, it's, uh, it's a German-made knife. It's also a collectible. It's made by a company, it's called uh, Chris and Green. It's a knife that is about 15 inch over length. You know, Mr. Camacho, directing your attention to the left side of the witness stand to four photographs that have been collectively marked as People's One. Do you see that exhibit, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, do those to be, appear to be photographs of the type of knife that at one point that afternoon was sold to the defendant? That's the, that's the item I sold them. Or more accurately, an item like the one you sold them. Is that correct to your knowledge? Yes. The far as I know, that's the, one I, the item or, or like the one I sold to him. Okay. Did Mr. Wattenberg continue to assist the defendant in the display of this particular knife, or did you have some role in the transaction? Well, when I got close to them, another customer was waiting for me. So I went and waited on this other customer. When I finished waiting on this other customer, I went back to Mr. O.J. Simpson to finish the sale that I was doing. Did Mr. And Wattenberg then, remain? Uh, pardon me. Did, did Mr. Wattenberg remain with you and the defendant while the sale was completed? Yeah, he, uh, Alan was, uh, with Mr. O.J. Simpson. And then when he said that he wanted a knife, uh, he required the knife sharpened. So I gave the knife to Alan so he can sharpen it. Uh, Mr. Camacho, I'd like to back up in terms of time just for a little bit here. When the defendant went over to the location where Mr. Wattenberg was, did you see him uh, gesture or point to a particular type of knife? Yeah, he just, uh, I guess something attracted him about the knife. It's a nice looking knife. And he just, uh, he liked it. Well, at the time, sir, and Your Honor, I ask that that be stricken because that really calls for a conclusion on the part of the witness. Well, can I have an answer right back, please? Yeah. Answer. Yeah, he 
just, I guess, something attracted him about the knife. It's a nice looking knife, and he just, he liked it. Uh, the objection is sustained. The answer will be stricken. Thank you. After the I guess portion, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Camacho, at the time that the defendant appeared in your store, were there different sizes of the same type of knife as depicted in People's One? Yes, there are two different sizes. And was the uh, other size knife larger or smaller than the one that was sold to the defendant? It's a tiny bit smaller, probably a, an inch or two inches smaller than the large size. And is the larger knife, at, the, at least at the time, was it priced differently than the larger knife? Yes, it is. Do you recall the price of the larger knife, that is the knife that was sold to the defendant that day of the filming? Uh, the price on the knife I sold uh, was uh, seventy-four ninety-eight plus the tax. And Mr. Camacho, at this time, do you recall how the smaller knife was priced? I believe the smaller one is priced at $59 or $64, something like that. Now, during the course, well, I'll withdraw that. After Mr. Wattenberg went to the back area of the store, you assisted the defendant in the sale of this larger knife, is that yes. correct? Yes. And did the defendant pay for the knife uh, or how did the defendant pay for the knife? Uh, he paid me with a hundred dollar bill. A cash transaction? In cash, yes. And did you make change for the defendant? Yes, I gave him the change. Uh, as of today, do you have uh, a general idea of the total cost of the knife, that is price plus tax? Uh, the total price was uh, $81.17. Now, before you actually received the cash money from the defendant, uh, did the defendant ask you to do anything with regard to the knife? Uh, he wanted to sharpen. And after the defendant asked you to have the knife sharpened, what did you do? So I gave it to Alan, so he uh, went back to the shop and resharpened it. And what did you do after you took the knife to Alan for purposes of sharpening the knife? Did you go back to the defendant? Did you remain with Alan? What did you do, sir? I uh, finished, you know, ring, bringing up the sale, like you just changed to Mr. Oche. And then uh, I went back to the shop to get the knife and give it back to him. Okay. At the time you sold the knife to the defendant, did you give him a receipt or a copy of the sales tape or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I gave him the receipt. Was there a receipt that was made for the, for, for the store that you recall? Or was it just the sales? Just uh, regular uh, register sales. And sir, uh, it's your testimony then that after the uh, $100 bill was presented by the defendant, after you made change, that you went back to where Mr. Wattenberg was and obtained the knife. Is that correct? Yes, sir. To your knowledge, had the knife been sharpened? It was sharpened. And uh, what did you do then with the knife after you uh, retrieved it from the area where Mr. Wattenberg was? I pick it up from the test, and then I just put him in a plastic bag, and I handed it to Mr. O.J. And after that, did the defendant leave the store? Yes, sir. He, he got the knife, and he just started walking out. Um, Mr. Camacho, about two weeks ago, were you interviewed by detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department? Yes, sir, I was. And where were you when you were interviewed by those detectives? I was at the, at the store. At the time you were interviewed, was anyone else from the store interviewed by those same detectives? Yes, uh, Alan Wattenberg was there, my boss. I'm sorry? Alan Wattenberg. And what about the other co-owner, <coughs> Richard Wattenberg? Was he there, to your recollection? Yeah, he was there, too. And did the detectives ask you some questions during the course of this interview? Yes, they did. And during the course of this interview, were you asked to uh, show a particular type of knife to the detectives? Yes, they asked me to show them a, a similar knife that I had sold to Mr. O.J. Simpson. And was that done? Yes, I did. They showed them the same knife that I had sold. And, sir, with regard to the type of knife, was this the larger or the smaller of the two knives? The larger size. Was the knife that you showed to the detectives also priced at $74.98? Yes, sir, the same price. 
And did the detectives purchase that night? Yes, they did. And with regard to the purchase price of the knife that you sold to the detectives, are you certain that it was seventy-four ninety-eight? I charged them the same price because they're all they're all marked. It's the same.